Okay, good morning. Uh, I'm going to be starting off the session, and I'm starting off with something very simple and straightforward, and that's 70 centimeters. Is bigger better? I'm not talking whether it's more beautiful, but is bigger better? So this is basically our experience with the 70 centimeter bore. Uh, I'll first show you some cases, and then I'll come to uh, more personal experiences. Well, we very well know that the companies have been talking to us about 70 centimeter, basically from an obesity perspective. And that's basically probably came from Western pressures, because people have uh, growing midriffs in the West, which we're seeing happening on this part of the continent also, but to a much larger extent out there. And that was probably one of the first major indications for a wide bore MRI was obesity. And this is just an example of a 153 kilo female uh, who you can see in the bore. Unfortunately, the projections are not uh, showing up well, and you can't see the, uh, but you can fairly make out that there is significant space for her to lie down in the machine and space above uh, to be uh, seen. The second is uh, case that I'm going to show you is uh, uh, more innovative uh, stuff that we're doing rather than going away from the uh, straightforward obesity stuff. Here's a four-year-old hyperactive kid who's refusing to get sedated. They can't even put him down to give him an intramuscular shot. He's such a spoiled and hyperactive kid. But he agreed after a lot of cajoling to go into the scanner with his brother. He said, my brother comes in, I'll go into the scanner, but no sedation. So this is the two of them there in the MR. The young four-year-old kid and his elder brother with him, giving him company. And uh, it just shows you how much space there is available. So you can see uh, the two kids uh, lying in the magnet. And this, is the, and this is the image that we got, where you can see uh, the kid which had, was in the head coil. Okay. And, of course, the additional advantage we got was with the body coil, his brother's brain also got partly scanned. Second, third case I'm showing you is the neonate who was suspected for HIE and needed a cranial MRI. And in fact, uh, we had an accident uh, just before this where our MR ventilator flew into the magnet. It was by mistake pushed forward from its location and was not velcroed down. So the MR ventilator was cracked up and uh, it was malfunctioning so we couldn't use it. So we needed to do this neonate scan using an AMBU. So what did we do? To AMBU, we put the sister in with the kid. There you can see quite nicely the sister in with the kid. And then there in the magnet. And you can see there's enough room. So the sister in with the kid, monitoring the kid and AMBUing. Well, another application where we've been happy with the 70 centimeters, people who have severe back pain and who just can't lie down straight, want to lie prone or lie decubitus, here's a patient in with severe pain lying in the decubitus position, and actually she's got her arm up because she was just felt her arm could support her better, and there's so much space in the bore. Then ankylosing spondylitis, we had a chap who came in, total flexion deformity of the cervical spine, fully bent forward, Actually, it was, uh, his neck was 90 degrees uh, to his thoracic spine, so it was like as good as parallel to the ground. And there's no way you can get somebody to lie down like that with uh, uh, being able to flex, the, I mean, uh, uh, extend his neck and put in the head coil. So what we did, we put the body coil on him, head. And that's him inside with the body coil on his head, uh, body coil on his head, and these are the images with a body coil, cranial images with a body coil. Absolutely perfect. So wonderful uh, innovation, I feel, in these type of individuals where you have difficulty. And that's only possible, really, with the 70 centimeter. Uh, you can see even the cis images are excellent uh, with the body coil. So if you just sort of recap, what are the 70 centimeter advantages? It puts patients at ease, helps to elevate anxiety, you result in less motion, sharper images, and it's useful in special situations, especially people who have sleep apnea. They can't lie flat, so in those, it's good to do it in a decubitus scan. Uh, kyphosis, ankylosing spondylitis, patients with severe back pain, obese patients, 
Of course, now we are sedating much fewer patients because we put the kid in with an accompanying, either with a parent or with another sibling or with, as we saw in the neonate, with the nurse. And it's also useful for kinematic studies. I'll conclude with this last case where there was a kid who refused to go into the MRI. What were our options? Simple. Either we get the kid anesthetized, the mother refused anesthesia for the kid. So then what do you do? You put the kid naturally into a vario with the mother. And that's what we did. That's the mother with the kid going in. In fact, the gentleman standing on the side uh, is the anesthetist. He looks a bit glum because he's lost work. And you can see that the mother is in with the kid. And there you can see it quite nicely, the mother with the kid. So there's so much room in a 70 centimeter. And that's it. The scan's over. You can see the mother and child are very happy. They've had a good experience, but they had one complaint, that the Vario has only one headphone. So only the mother could listen to music and the kid couldn't. So that's, I think, one next step that we need to ask Siemens to do is that we need two headphones now with a 70 centimeter bore. So the Vario is a really a friendly MRI. And you know, we don't only scan humans. We scan inanimate objects. Uh, very often people used to call somebody a coconut and say he's got a coconut head, indicating whether he had adequate gray matter or not. So we scanned a coconut. This is an MRI of a coconut. We've done a fractional anisotropy of the coconut. But more importantly, we wanted to see what's the gray and white matter tracks in a coconut. So we've done a DTI of the coconut. And if you like these, I'll show you a few more because my presentation was short and I have much more time. As to other stuff that we're doing, using CT and MR, we scan fruits. So this is an orange, and that's the 3D of the orange. And then we adjust the VRTs so we can get the skin off. You adjust it further, and you can see the seeds inside. These are multiple fruits, 3D CTs, and you can see the internal parts of an orange, sections, a pumpkin, inside of a pumpkin, another pumpkin, the inside with the seeds, a pineapple, the internal parts of a pineapple. Looks really nice, a pineapple inside, but doesn't look that good when it's cut outside. And uh, I, guess, I guess you can, th these are easy spotters. You can recognize all these vegetables out here. That's a lady's finger, a brinjal, a radish, uh, an apple, VRTs, the inside of an apple, quite nice. Tomato, the inside of a tomato, and flowers. Thank you very much. <laughs>